Let's go back to 1992 with The Late Show and how Australians host a dinner party. As you know, uh, this show is done live every Saturday night and as we speak, about 50% of all Australians will be doing one thing, having a dinner party. Now, as, as you may know, these can be pretty horrific experiences, which is why we've decided to prepare this brief guide to the Australian dinner party. Now, first up, you'll need a host, or in our case, a hostess. This reminds me of any sort of family meal. Now, I don't have many parties, dinner parties like this. I, I Yeah, I feel I'm not mature enough yet uh, at the age of 32. Um, but I'm just thinking of mothers, all right? Who can relate to this? That the mother who is sort of the host, does all the cooking, does all the cleaning, spends more time asking people if everyone has got enough food than actually eating themselves. It's her job to spend the entire day cooking and cleaning and preparing, and then the entire evening apologising for just about everything. <laughs> I'm sorry about the soup, everyone. I think I might have burnt the onions oh, when I was cooking. No, 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 no. I'm sorry about the tomatoes. I couldn't get any in season, and no, I just. The tomatoes were fine. That was a good report, hey? What a disaster! That was my fault too. I'm sorry. <laughs> As you may have picked up, it's, it's the guest's job to uh, sort of praise the hostess in uh, direct proportion to her self-denigration, uh, hence... I'm sorry about the chicken, it was a little bit tough. No. Oh, no. Oh. I'm sorry I didn't have time to restump the house. I, I should have done it. Yeah, you can, uh, you can actually imagine the Hitlers holding a dinner party. We're sorry we invaded Poland. No! <laughs> We're doing exactly the same thing. Apart from a lot of apologising, the hostess uh, also has to monitor the food and drink situation throughout the evening, even if this means killing off all other forms of conversation. So there we were. Mm. Absolutely knackered. Oh, mm. bet. Mm. <laughs> we get back to the bus, mm. and who should be in the front seat? Do I have some no, more the... wine, Shelley? Perhaps Excuse I can talk about right in the middle of my conversation. Well, darling, you've been a little bit slow. Yeah. I've got the meal. Oh, the... Why... Now, I find this actually really annoying. Uh, when you're constantly asked, have you got enough? Do you need more drink? And, and I get it. That person is the host of the party, right? That's the host of the party, and that's sort of their job, to make, everyone, make sure everyone is fed and watered, um, and got plenty of everything. But it's just like, just stop. Just, just please, just stop. Get on with your own thing. You know, we're trying to enjoy it. You know, we can help ourselves if need be. I much prefer parties where you just help yourself, you know, to drinks and things like that. Why, why do I get the impression these two are married? <laughs> uh, now, the other, the other, please, the other role of the hostess is, to, of course, to arrange seating. With couples, fairly straightforward. You just put them as far apart as humanly possible. But singles can be a bit more of a challenge, you know, when you go and invite a bit of a single friend to your dinner party. So what the hostess will usually do is invite single another single <laughs> and place the two hapless fools together and kind of, you know, wait for the magic to start. <sighs> So, Michael, still no luck on the romance front? No, no, I'm no, 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 Still no. single? That's an incredible coincidence because Shelley here is also single. Mm -hmm. Her husband died last week. Great. Oh. Uh, apart, from, apart from being single, these two will have absolutely nothing in common, but it won't stop our hostess from giving it a red-hot go. Michael, I believe you're in film. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, I make pornos. <laughs> because Shelley here runs a women's refuge. Really? What has that got to do with each other? That's not got any similarities apart from there's women involved. <laughs> so you'd be able to introduce me to heaps of chicks. <laughs> careful you are with your guest list, there are always some undesirables that manage to sneak in. One of the most common at an Australian dinner party is this couple. They're usually in their 30s and they have only one interest in life, an interest by no one else. Have I told you we're renovating? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing the cornices at the moment uh, because we're finished doing the floorboards. I've actually got pictures of the original work right here. Yeah. Pass them around in a clockwise These, direction. Um, <laughs> these people can drag home renovations into almost any conversation. Now, I would say that that is so true. There is always people like this at a dinner party. And if there isn't anyone at the dinner party like that, 
then it's probably you. And I feel quite silly because it's probably me as well. Um, what salad, anyone? I'm sorry about the dressing. I could have really used a little bit more vinaigrette and I'm, I, could, I could shoot myself. That's exactly what I thought to myself when I used an oil-based paint on the scooting board. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually keep those because I've got six of each. OK. <laughs> Please. But perhaps the most undesirable character to work his way into a dinner party, and it's not just the ponytail, let me tell you. It's, um, it's this chap here. He's, uh, he's lots of things. He's, um, he's, um, he's politically correct. Did I tell you that I'm thinking of not flying British Airways to London at the end of the year? I hear they still fly to South Africa. <laughs> yes, um, he's also an overactor. No, he's also... <laughs> A compulsive name dropper. Did I tell you, I went to the uh, Writers Festival meeting the other night. I spoke to Philip, Philip Adams. Oh. Oh. And uh, Jill. Oh, sorry, Jillian Armstrong. Oh. And I said that if we're going to broaden the base on this whole Writers Festival thing, I want to see the plans. That's what we're... I said to the actor. Oh, more well, whining. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's certain people in here that, that, um, are the actual actors or, or the, you know, the, the show proper people. And then they've stuck a few random people in there, like the two women. So the wife of the home renovator person and the female single uh, lady, I've got a feeling they just don't, they, they don't belong there. They're not a part of this and just they're there um, as guests because they are the ones that have cracked. Everyone else has kept a straight face. Those two women have let the laughter go and they haven't said anything so apart from no they haven't said anything but i think the most fascinating thing about this guy is that he tends to consider himself more of a feminist than any of the women at the table i related during the week i actually saw basic instinct and as a man <laughs> <laughs> As a, as a man, I feel offended. The roles of women that were disgraceful. Gee, I loved the film. Oh, so did I. So did I. I loved it too. Maybe I'm sensitive because I've been doing a lot of work with the uh, women's committee on the uh, non genderfication of vote. <laughs> How close was that? We uh, actually, during the week, we had a win. We changed. <laughs> we changed. We changed Walkman to Walkperson. Mm, yeah. oh. I think we've all sat next to a guy like this at a dinner party. Why people invite Australian Democrats, it's got me, Pete. I'm actually voting independent. Good I don't want the party political Good system to, to well, come into... That's about it for our beginner's guide to a, a dinner party. The only thing that remains now is getting rid of your guests at the end of the evening. And, uh, well, you can try yawning. Oh, dear. Is, um, is that the time? You can try a fairly subtle comments like... Well, it's, it's been a great night, hasn't yes, it? It's a lovely night. But at last, on Saturday night, there is now a foolproof method for getting rid of your dinner party guests. I know, everyone. Why don't we watch The Late Show? <laughs> oh, no, get out of here. <laughs> Just... Oh, my cheeks are hurting. My cheeks are really hurting. I've watched a few Late Show sketches, uh, but not the ones that are done live. But that was brilliant. The way they kept a straight face for pretty much all of it, but there were times that the characters broke um, and they started corpsing, basically, and it was fantastic. On a, on, a on a serious note, though, do we all know these people? I, I, as I said, I can think of mothers uh, as the hosts of these di uh, dinner parties that, you know, Always sorry for making mistakes and always want to make sure everything's topped up with drink and food. You've got the people that talk about themselves. You get the, you know, the two single people sat together. I, oh, just, ow, my lip, my, my, uh, my cheeks are so sore now. That was a good laugh and I needed that. And hopefully you enjoyed that too. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button and you subscribe for more fun like this. I will catch you next time.